Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to the weekend recap number six of our official series where you watch some moments from this past weekend stream on our server with some of my commentary. As always, the server and Discord links are in the description. Also include timestamps for the different tracks in the video. So feel free to jump around if there's any that catch your eye. We're starting our weekend session on Friday here at Clutch Kickers. And also, uh, this uh, this recap is going to be a little bit different than normal. I feel like, uh, if you didn't notice from the title, this weekend was definitely interesting. Uh, one thing that I've done or changed with this video is I've removed all the in-game audio. This is basically how, uh, when I record with Twitch, I can save or have it only save the in-game audio versus the music and... Uh, is my general commentary during stream but i realized if anyone clips uh stuff from twitch it doesn't really save any audio so let me know if you guys are okay with this you know if not i can look at maybe some other solutions but i figured this would uh be okay but we'll see we'll see so we're starting out this video like i mentioned on clutch kickers we're following yasko having a pretty good lead here i really like still i know uh, we talked about it last video but the night and day cycles, especially with this sunset, looks so nice. I feel like it adds like a pretty good level of realism uh, to Aseto, for sure. And uh, we are now switching to Sagoya, Sagoya Park. Another track that I enjoy, following Turbo. Trying to level up a little bit on my, ch excuse me, on my chase. Uh, this weekend though, uh, and like I said, this video is going to be a little bit different. I just wanted to have maybe like a, a conversation. I think re-watching this and honestly even making this video was a little bit of a struggle for me. I wasn't really super happy with watching some of the footage back and, uh, I guess I'll just tell you, you'll see it later in this video, but this weekend included, let's see, I think last video I talked about making sure you do a bolt check. I'm, I'm putting air quotes, I guess you can't see, but you know, like checking your bolts for your rig, similar how you would check like your bolts for your car, right? And I was like, oh, that's kind of cringe. Like, I don't know, that doesn't make any sense. Well, this weekend uh, I was like, yeah, you know, I should probably really do that and just make sure. Well, I found out you can't probably really see it with this cam, uh, the foot cam, but at the top right, my middle brake pedal, or I guess my brake pedal, the uh, bolt was actually almost all the way out and i only learned that later on uk streets i was like what is that noise went to go look the bolt was literally like maybe two or three threads from just falling out so that was cool uh and then also my internet i've been having crazy struggles with it this week has been just an absolute fight with my isp to get it fixed but i did find out that yeah there's a, a lot of problems after a lot of back and forth so Hopefully they'll be fixing it by this weekend stream. If not, uh, worst case by next weekend stream. So yeah, my internet cut out multiple times in this stream. And then to top it all off, uh, I actually then broke my pedal. So here we're on uh, backwoods and let's talk about this before I talk about the rest of what I was going to get into. So this is C Toretto's backwoods track. Now, when it first came out, I was like, oh, I don't know. It's like really big. It kind of feels a lot like Car X where the cars are really small. The track's really big. Now, I think if I recall correctly, C Toretto made this track with the idea of having uh, traffic. So in that sense, it does make sense. Uh, this track actually has grown on me a little bit. So I really like wanted to show this first run after trying to mess a little bit with my tune on the lines and just kind of what I was doing. I was really just kind of trying to figure out what the track felt like. I think we've ran this track one time, maybe for an hour. And so and I almost want to say that's been like right after release. So it's been a while since I've even touched this track or really given it a, a full amount of effort. But yeah, I just wanted to kind of show the lines that I was looking right here. I want to say it's, I mean, and it's really hard to even give my thoughts here because I still feel like there's a lot of improvement. But here you can kind of see me doing a lot of uh, what I call like maybe line fishing. So I'm just trying to see like, okay, do I pull inside here? Where can I go on the outside zone and carry speeds? It is such a fast track. I mean, you can see at the bottom right, I'm basically fully throttled, um, which actually might even be part of the issue, but you'll see like these elevation changes right here. 
it's so crazy. You can lose so much wheel speed. And yeah, I was just trying to figure out what made sense or, or what didn't. So it's not the cleanest, uh, you know, maybe some footage that you've seen in the past, but this is just kind of like a real look at it. And then I added, of course, you know, with new tracks, I try to have two like lead runs as I'm figuring out maybe what the lines are and then two uh, tandems or, or chase runs after that. So that's just me like trying to figure out what makes sense, dial in the car a little bit. I don't think I ever really got it fully dialed in, but it was starting to feel a little bit better near the end. Here we are now chasing turbo with a couple people in tow. And you'll, you'll see here, like he's taking a little bit different lines, maybe I want to say than uh, I was. So this is me like fighting really like the car, like where I want to put it versus what the lines he's doing. But ultimately, as I mentioned before in our past videos, you want to kind of try to follow someone's lines when you're in this chase position. It's really easy to say, oh, you know what? I don't really like these lines. I'm just going to do my own. But at that point, it's almost kind of like you should be in a in a different train, right? You you really want to try to follow your your lead or anyone in front of you in a train as best as possible. So it's a little bit messy. You can kind of see a lot of hesitation from my side. I think also someone pointed out, which I'm starting to realize, especially when I was going through some of this footage, I do think my force feedback is uh, clipping a little bit more than it should. So maybe the Assetto Corsa force feedback setting needs to be turned down. I've been kind of hesitant to do it, honestly, though, because I do want to keep as much uh, feeling that I can in the wheel itself. So uh, this is now nighttime on this track, which is really cool. You'll notice, though, there is a weird glitch that we found out. I actually talked to the Swarm guys about it. You'll see, like, Unlimited's car, he has some set of, I guess, like, secondary headlights. I don't necessarily think it adds more uh, visibility, but you can almost see the same. I don't know if it's on the E46 is exclusively, but yeah, it's a, it's an interesting, it's something to do with the fog, I'm sure. So I, I think I talked to uh, one of the guys from Swarm and they said they're going to be looking at redoing the headlights in general. So it sounds like it was kind of a mute point. They, they were already going to fix some of this, so... Just wanted to point that out if anyone's like oh what is going on yeah that's uh something with the fog something with the headlights but should be fixed probably in the next update that swarm has for this car pack so no worries there it really wasn't that like uh you know not not that big of a deal but it definitely <laughs> something that i was staring at a lot so now we move to another new track now if some of you guys might not know this is i believe uh chelsea denof is actually home track IRL and I think someone has said this to me but I remember when I was first starting to to learn how to drift IRL I watched like his how to drift series and I believe it was actually on this track that he recorded some of that footage but this track looks so nice I I really like aesthetically how this track looks uh but it's also so extremely hard you'll see here I'm in the S15 I uh, wanted to, of course, go with my E46, but I was a little too slow to to get in, and, and it was already full up. So switching to the S15, I did run it a lot more stock than I normally had in uh, early times or early earlier videos, and it actually felt a lot better. So a lot of the changes I realized, I think, were a net negative, and instead of trusting like the way that Swarm had their car set up uh, stock, I, I probably should have just said it like that and, and figured it out. I was trying to add a lot more grip to this car, but it actually didn't feel terrible. I mean, it actually felt honestly better. You can see there, like I'm just trying to figure out these lines. Uh, a lot of this was me driving, figuring out the car, figuring out the lines a little bit. I wasn't really feeling confident at all to follow anyone. There are a couple of chase uh, clips that I have in here. But uh, yeah, it's not really something I'm like super proud of, but I think it's important to show like, yeah, it is with new tracks, especially technical ones, I would argue like this or really narrow ones like, yeah, you know, it's it's hard to like want to force yourself, I guess, to stay on it. But I think that when you really challenge yourself and say like, yeah, this is a hard track, but I'm going to really try to nail this down. and I'm not going to let this be a track that I just avoid. Like I'm actually going to get good at it. I think that's a really important skill, you know, even with car packs, but 
you know, and drifting, like, or I guess really anything, like, I think it's important to challenge yourself and, and really give it time and not just be, uh, I, I don't want to say quitter. That's kind of aggressive, but not just say like, oh yeah, I, I, I hate this track. It's like, well, if it's more of a skill issue or like something that's a little bit outside of your normal, uh, I guess like tracks you would prefer, this is like a great example of kind of pushing through, <laughs> pushing through the pain, I guess. I, I don't know. That's probably the best way I could put it. But here we're on a, on a follow of Turbo's lead. Shout out to Turbo for always helping me out. I think uh, a lot of the OTM boys, it's really helpful to anyone really, but I know the OTM boys do a lot of this like hand holding where like, I think they gave me a lot of time to try to fill out the track and understand it. And then um, we're pretty open for me to, to try to chase. And it's always helpful to have like a, a North star or like basically someone that you can kind of replicate the lines that they're taking. And you're actually going to probably see that a lot uh, in, in a lot of these clips you'll see in these later tracks on Saturday that we drove. But yeah, this is a track I would definitely like to get a lot better. This is a, a track that skill checked me extremely hard. I would almost say like, I, not that I like wanted to stop driving, but up until this point, like we drove tracks, you know, Segoya Park, Clutch Kickers that I've driven a lot, felt pretty comfortable on. I was feeling good about my uh, chases and proximity on those. And then going to Backwoods where I was like not really understanding or really feeling confident. And then to to pass Acres here that I just feel like I <laughs> got reminded that I still have a lot to go was really painful. And I just lost all of a, if I had any, any of my mojo, you know what I mean? But it happens, like like I said, like I think it's important. And, and this is why I want to kind of call attention to this is I've seen a lot of people struggle on things and they say, you know what, I hate this, I give up. And it and it, it is easy to, to fall into that. But I think the, the really good drivers, you know, take that as a challenge and uh, use that to improve. So we're now actually, we've, I think we've seen this before, crazy entry there. Um, this is Muscleman Circuit. This is a technically a home track for me here in Arizona. I've only driven this IRL a couple times on a very low horsepower stock E36. Uh, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't really even say I understood what I was doing. I was just kind of throwing it around, going around the track, nothing too crazy, but it's always fun to, to be able to actually get a little bit more experience on this track. The last time I think we drove this, we talked a lot about uh, focusing on those little red sections. So you'll see you know, we have flags over here. We're going to aim for those. We have this little red section here. We want to kind of aim there. I was a little bit outside, but I'm trying to follow Professor's angle or rather his line through that section. Here again, aim for these little red sections are going to set you up pretty well. I like to try to extend this out. I think it depends on who's driving. Some people like to uh, just straighten it out and then uh, recoup and go forward. Professor had some crazy, crazy... Uh, entries. I guess I didn't have another clip from there, but you can see the OTM boys. Definitely a home track for them. I mean, I think this is literally made by OTM, so it totally makes sense. But yeah, they're, they're definitely killing this, no problem. I still think I have a lot to improve. Uh, I've been kind of thinking about the tune a little bit more on this big sweeper, maybe having a fourth gear, like a really an overall, a shorter ratio. And then using my fourth gear in that section. And then, uh, you know, I like to be in third gear for most of the time. And I think that sequential feeling from third to fourth or fourth to third is a lot easier than a second to third or something like that. Or like, a, I guess that'd be probably the, the most uh, common gear switch. And then that section too, I was kind of messing with the e-brake, trying to see how it feels. It's still feeling a little bit awkward for me. It seems like I, like sometimes I feel pretty confident on this track. And then other times I'm like, oh man, it, I'm just like not hitting it the way that I think I should be. But again, it's it's kind of all a part of that learning process. And I think that's really important to, to continue to push through it and, and try to uh, not force yourself, but encourage yourself to to learn. And yeah, <laughs> that's so crazy. Turbo throwing in a crazy uh, entry there too. But now this is our last track of the Friday session. This is back to Drift Playground. I really do like this track. I still think I'm... You know, and again, especially watching the footage back, I think I was a little bit tired from this week. Uh, you know, my confidence was basically gone at this point. I mean, any excuse you could make probably, you know, would fit here. But I, like, again, I was like really, 
really far back on procs. Didn't want to mess anyone up too much. Wasn't really trusting my car as maybe as much as I should be, you know. Just one of those things. I, and and even though, like I, I said before, I think when we were on Pat's Acres, like, you know, this track isn't necessarily hard. I, I would say, I think to be smooth and, and be consistent, especially in a train situation, there's a lot more variables, which makes it more interesting and challenging. But even though like I was not feeling super great, I guess I could, could argue, I still was just trying to push through and, and see what I could learn from this. I think really my biggest thought through this session, cause we do about an hour block of each track. I was just trying to see like what other lines were out there, what other people were doing. And there was actually a lot of variation. I think there was more variation than other tracks that I've seen on this track. I'm not really too sure why. I don't know. I, I honestly thought like a lot of people had started on this track, but the more I've talked to people, I think it really depends on which era of Assetto Course. If you could, I mean, that's crazy to think about, but what era of Assetto Course you came into? I mean, when I came in, I think this was a more popular track. I think, I, I don't know, nowadays maybe you could say like Clutch Kickers or, or Brooklyn Park maybe, but if you go further back, I mean, there was even a lot more tracks back in the day too. So it's just kind of interesting. There'll be a track that's more of like a easy to learn, hard to master track. I think maybe just so the elevation changes in the tight corners, but now we switch over to our Saturday session at rhythm and flow. Another track that I really enjoy being on. This is a good one just for, like I've mentioned before, for warming up. I'm trying a little bit harder. I know after my Friday session and kind of what I was talking about earlier, I was like, you know what? Saturday, I'm going to turn it around. Like Friday was rough. Uh, Saturday, I'm going to really push myself to be uh, really good or better, sorry, on my proximity for chasing, falling lines. Like I'm just going to really try hard today. And uh, <laughs> we'll see. I mean, we'll talk about what happens later in this video, but really trying to focus on matching Turbo's entry there on, on Rhythm and Flow. He's a lot more uh, big angle and running that outside corner, so I'm working on that. And then also just thinking about the transition points, I'm really like analyzing his car. You can see there's a couple points where he takes maybe a deeper, deeper line in some spots or a line that I wasn't necessarily ready for. And instead of having like a massive correction. I'm just trying to stay smooth, especially as I see these two red arrows behind me. I'm really just focusing mostly, and actually lately, a lot more on the that front tire, that front tire that's facing me. Kind of gives me a lot of insight and is kind of my chase point where before that I was aiming for more like the door slash a mirror section. And I always felt like I was a little bit too far back. So I don't know, maybe that's a helpful advice. Maybe not. I think some people are a little bit too aggressive with that but I think it comes down to not matching their leads angle. If I were to just give like my thoughts there, but we're now on villain sports land. Still really enjoy this track. I feel like we drive it a lot, but I really, I really actually do like this track and it feels like a lot more uh, gritty, I guess for me, but we're following here. Uh, this is a driver I haven't driven with before. So as I mentioned, when I drive with someone I'm not super familiar with, I just try to give, gi oh wow, give <laughs> uh, proximity for them. So I'm not hitting them, especially if I'm not aware with the lines. And you can see here, like the lead driver doing a little bit of a manji, not typically what we've been doing. We're doing more of a straight line into initiation onto that big sweeper. So trying to give a little bit more procs. You can see, I think it's reg and then the other driver I either can't see or will not be able to pronounce his name, uh, but behind him. And that's a different line and a style that we take, but we're kind of trying to match whatever our lead's putting down, even though it's not what we're used to. So now we sweet, uh, switch. Wow, today, <laughs> rough, man. If you're listening to this, I'm so sorry. Uh, I don't know what's wrong with me, but the UK streets as we were at today, we are actually on nighttime. I thought it'd be cool. I, I think we've watched a lot of UK streets on these uh, recaps. I, actually, I'm really not sure why, because it's not that we run it necessarily a ton, but it's kind of growing on me. I really like the sweeping action. I really like these wide, like fast angle. Nighttime too has like a really like, I'm not really sure how to describe it, but like, a, I, I don't want to use the word gritty again, but like, a, 
I guess, like that type of vibe, especially when you have like a big train. Here, I'm just trying to follow foul. We had a lot, actually a lot of this uh, session on UK streets was actually me focusing a lot more on my leads and trying to analyze these lines even further. So you can see foul taking the line that we've basically talked about previously, uh, a little bit different in some sections, but generally about the same. This part two, I've been trying to work a lot better on keeping proximity when we get into this section. So right here, a little bit of lag, right here, keeping speed as much as I can and then kind of keeping with him on that entry into this big long sweeper. I was a little bit far back. There was a couple clips that were a little bit better, but I didn't have any good like full run examples. So I, I thought this was like a good, a good overall run. Foul doing a really good job on his lead. Most of the mistakes I think were on my part. But yeah, really fun. UK streets, really fun at night. I really like that. And that's why I've been a huge advocate of these uh, night to or day to night time cycles. But these were voted by you guys too. So shout out to you guys. Now we switch to BHS Drift Playground. Another very fun track that I enjoy. I Maybe it's something about these long, like fast sweeping tracks that I like really enjoy. Seems to be where we keep or rather where I keep saying I, I like to drive. Now, Reg had, or really all of us, but Reg had a, a lot of good runs. Maybe not the cleanest on my part here on the chase. I actually included this. I think there's two runs back to back here uh, that I wanted to include. So you could see this uh, day rise cycle. It's really like the skybox looks so nice. Not the best chase, but I think fairly consistent or at least... Uh, predictable for people behind me but uh i think what i was going to say though is reg had this really good modification to the uh initiation section that i'm actually a huge advocate of i couldn't really figure it out and this goes to show like there are lines that people can take that maybe you're not expecting or you've never driven with not that reg is that person but that can help you like unlock a part of the track that you maybe are struggling with so right here going on the right hand side to the outside Kind of a manji, I suppose. I think before we were doing like a double manji, which just felt terrible. Other times people were just going straight line and then uh, basically ripping the e-brake a little bit of left foot even maybe. And it's just such a slow section. It's really hard for the train to stay together. But that line that Reg took was really nice. I'm actually, as I said, like a huge advocate of his entry. I'm going to work on that a little bit more. It's new to me, uh, but, but yeah. And there actually you saw... Uh, I should have maybe talked about that when it was happening, but Reg took a little bit different of a line more outside instead of uh, a faster sweep that I took. And that, those tires will, as we've talked about before, reach out and grab your car. So I tried to like scrub speed a little bit. Luckily, he was able to fix it. But because, uh, you know, I feel like we we're friends enough that we can kind of uh, get doors for better or for worse. I was hoping that he could keep it from a reset and I could keep from reset and here we are. And then here, uh, we're just getting the train back together. Yeah. Re really. I do enjoy BHS drift playground. I think there are some weird issues though on, uh, like for stuttering. I'm not sure if it's the trees, but anyway, now this is another new track. So this is drift Appalachia. I think if you guys have seen, uh, Chelsea to actually, wow. Yeah. Interesting. So we've had uh, past acres and now this one, which has been kind of somewhat getting more popular. At least I've seen it more. I'm not sure if it's like a brand new, I guess it's a track or is it just like a road? I'm not sure. But yeah, this track really, really interesting. So I didn't have a ton of clips of me just doing a lead straight up. So I did have like this one where I was just trying to keep a little bit of proximity and uh, stay with them, trying to learn the line, see what turbo and others were going to be taking. I think most of this, I ended up being with Turbo just because he was really consistent and not having, uh, like, he he wasn't having to reset or anything like that. Also, shout out to uh, Podcast Primate. He actually stopped by during the stream. He's the creator of this track and said what's up as we were kind of uh, driving around. One thing I, I was curious about, too, is I was saying to him, you know, this track just feels like really, like, uh, loose. It reminded me a lot of Adam LZ's secret spot where it just felt like, I, I don't want to say ice because that's not necessarily true, but uh, I guess we'll just say like slippery. 
And he actually mentioned to me that there is a modification that he's made for these to replicate the basically like dirt or like an old track road or something or like an old road, like a dusty road. And I think that same implementation that we've seen on Adam LZ's is also on uh, this track too. At least how it felt to me. Ooh, <laughs> I did not know that section was in there, but I will use this opportunity to say when you are on a tow track like this or really any other, this is a United States one. So you want to be on the right hand side of the road, stick to that side, especially as you see uh, people's title cards come up or if you're watching that track or the map camera, sorry, the map, I guess, just generally the map at the bottom right or whatever you have it on your, uh, on your Assetto, try to stay in your lane. It's kind of like a real life thing too. Generally, you want to basically just stay in your lane and not even cross over these yellows, especially like on a Togue situation. Like you could actually, uh, um, basically go to the hospital right uh best case if you have like a collision with another car so it's probably like best practice if you can stay there i don't think i'm good enough to do that yet so we're kind of using both lanes here but i am trying to keep a really good eye out for anyone's title card that pops up or uh or even like my map at the bottom right but i would say i'm mostly looking at the title cards like this saw that coming over there switching over and sometimes like you might even have to stop drifting just to make sure you don't hit anyone. But yeah, here is... And also one other thing I really like about this track too is he has these sections like this. I don't know if this is how it is IRL, but like these little looping sections. It makes it really nice to, to kind of hot lap this track. And I really like these tracks where you don't have to reset and re-go. You can just keep hot lapping around. And it's cool to see like a Togue that's kind of sim uh, set up similar to that, if not literally as a hot hot lap track. So now we're feeling a little bit more confident. We are now following Turbo. Uh, he's looking a little bit more confident as well. You can see, as always, if you let off the throttle, if you make a mistake, Turbo ends up just, you know, going miles away from you. So it was definitely a good challenge to try to stay close with him, learn the lines. He, I, I don't really don't think he's ever driven this track. I could be wrong. But it was kind of cool to see how his lines were evolving every lap that he was taking, how other people's lines were evolving as we were driving. I had a lot of other clips that were not full uh, uphill, downhill runs. But it was cool to watch back and see, like, everyone was kind of thinking about it. And I think in general, like, we did have that one collision, but when people were trying to learn this track and going up and down at different times, everyone was uh, really consider it yeah there was a couple times where you know there was some collisions or whatnot but i think overall everyone was pretty respectful which was really cool to see and so i think too like uh if you're on a so this is a u.s track if you're on a japanese track i think the rules flip-flop i believe where you want to actually be on the left hand side i'm not sure actually if you're if you're listening to this part you got to tell me in the comments how does that work on a togue is it doesn't matter what country you're in or is it like universal rules i'm actually not sure but here we're getting to the top. I did, maybe it's a little bit long of a section, but I thought it'd be cool. I don't think a lot of people have seen this track. Me making a massive mistake, uh, unfortunately. But cool to see <laughs> a complete up and downhill. And uh, I was mostly scrubbing through this footage to see if I saw any like crazy issues or uh, or resets. And I guess I missed this part, but also like this is a another opportunity that we can talk about where I mentioned before, if you're drifting with people that you've drifted with before, like you can be a little bit uh, more of a degenerate, I guess. Like in that situation, obviously I should have reset first uh, before I hit him. And even after like, you know, as a punishment, I look at it kind of that way. It's like, yeah, I probably should have reset, but hopefully fingers crossed because, uh, me, Turbo, Reg, Mods, and, and other people on the server are friends enough, we typically can work through it. Like, if there's a little bit too much of contact or something like that happens, we don't have to fully reset. We can just kind of, like, see if we can make it work, you know? But again, I like, I would only do that with people that you're cool with, and, and even then, like, you know, I always look at the game chat and make sure, like, everyone's chilling with it. Otherwise, like, yeah, that can get mad annoying and, and kind of get frustrating even if it's a friend of yours so hopefully they uh don't hate me i haven't heard any i've asked i think a couple times 
watch when we uh, look at the comments of this video after it's published and they go, yeah, man, it would be really cool if you just reset, though, actually. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that doesn't happen, but uh, also fair enough. So now we're switching. We have our bottom hill. This is the end section we're going to be looping. I wanted to include one more run. I know these are a little bit long, but I wanted to show the nighttime version of this. I really do like these night versions of Tog tracks. It makes it a lot harder for sure, but I do kind of enjoy that challenge to a, to an extent. I think if I knew the track better, it would be even more fun. But this track was pretty fun. It it was a lot more focused on like your throttle control because of that what we talked about that dusty like road like less grip kind of uh that was happening. So I, I don't really have any like great comments about the lines i i really couldn't tell you what feels right or what makes sense so far i think i would feel a little bit more comfortable maybe after like another session or two saying like okay this is what i'm looking for this is what i'm thinking here i'm just trying to honestly keep up with whoever's in front of me and not lose them you know especially when it is turbo that's for sure but really anyone and try to just focus on what lines they're taking and then how my car uh, is reacting to that too but while we're watching this and then we'll be seeing the downhill and then switching to our last track uh, i just kind of wanted to talk about a little bit about like approaching hard tracks like we've talked about a couple and the next track actually is another one that's uh one that i've never driven i think i've driven a couple times we'll talk about it later but basically like being willing to stick with things when they're difficult now i, I don't know if this is really like just a drift comment but you know i've seen a lot of people like i've seen like basically a fork of people right so i've seen some people who really struggle and this and i'm not excluded by this uh either but i've seen like basically two sets of people like one where like they struggle but they try to improve they're really thinking about like what mistakes they're making and then also like asking for feedback. Like, I think that's one big thing for me is like, I don't like to give advice uh, if, unless I'm asked. And especially when like, at least for me, like I've had people in the past, like try to give me feedback. And it's like, um, you know, it's like, I, I guess I don't know how else to say this, but it's like, if someone that was like, hmm, yeah, I'm not sure how to really say this without it maybe coming off across a little bit rough. But I'll just say, like, if someone, you know, would you rather take advice from someone that makes $10,000 a year on, like, how to make money or someone that makes a million dollars a year, right? That's kind of like, I guess, like, a, I really, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just saying, like, it really, you want to take advice from people and, and make sure that they're qualified to give you that advice, right? Like, if someone's brand new to a seto, uh, you know comes to me and says like hey man like you should really like fix your lines there is maybe some value in that and maybe it actually doesn't matter i always try to consider what they're saying but at the same time like the advice of like someone like a, a pro driver telling me hey man like i've made this similar mistake past years this is what i've done to fix it here's what i'd recommend i guess what i'm saying is like really like the the value of the advice advice will change a lot by base off who gives it to you and i don't really always feel that qualified to give it i feel like that dude it's like, hey, man, like, yeah, dude, like, let me tell you how to make money and I'm only making $10,000 a year, right? As an example. So what I'm saying is back to what my original point here is without getting too off track, which I'm really uh, good at doing, uh, is basically like I'd rather someone ask me for advice and see them like working through it, taking the advice and and trying to turn, trying to work with it instead of looking at someone and being like, hey, man, by the way, I noticed this. You should do this different, you know. But really quick before I finish that thought or... Uh, I guess what I just want to say is we're now switching to EK Tezukaba. I'm not sure. Tezukaba? Uh, that sounds close. I've heard of this called the Fruits Line. Why it's called the Fruit Line, I really don't know. I also learned that a lot of people actually started their Assetto journey on this track. I barely have had any time on this track. I think ultimately, like if I, if I genuinely think about all the times I've driven this track, and it's mostly been downhill on this section we're currently on. I want to say maybe two hours. Maybe that's like a stretch. So this was really eye-opening for me to try to do. 
And uh, especially when I saw the OTM boys start stacking in, I got uh, a little bit nervous. But this was a this was a really fun track. You can see a little bit of collisions happening here and there. But yeah, my, mainly just me trying to keep up. It's not going to be the prettiest footage, but I did want to show, again, full uphills all the way to the other side. And then uh, I have another clip from the other side going all the way up, all the way back down. So let me let me finish on my last thought before I forget. I know it's kind of like awkward the way. I mean, again, like these videos are not scripted. Like I'm just kind of shooting from the cuff. And, and I do have like some notes of like what tracks are there, maybe some thoughts that I wanted to make sure I talk about. But that's basically it. But uh, yeah, so like there's that one set of driver who's like trying to learn, sticking with it when it's really difficult and trying to improve. And then there's the other, you know, set of, I guess, people or drivers, you could say, where it's like, oh yeah well like you know this track or this car pack not even just swarm just in general um like I, yeah i just it's just bad i don't like it and then that's it right and then like they just don't drive that track or they don't drive that car pack or whatever it might be because it's just like they're not willing to learn and i think either way is totally okay i think we're all able to make our own choices and and ultimately you know this is a simulator but it is still a game in a way and if you're not having fun, if you're not having fun drifting, like, uh, that's a problem. I think drifting is here to be fun. I think drifting is really fun drifting with other friends. But, like, one thing with that statement that I think back to is I remember when I first started drifting IRL, I really thought to myself, like, and I was honestly, I was really struggling. Like, I was really struggling. And I had never really, like, done uh, drifting. I've done, like, a little bit of autocross, a little bit of, like, canyon carving, if you could call it that, but nothing, nothing like that. And like my motivation the entire time and, and even really now, like it's not really changed much is like, I want to be able to go out there and drift with my homies. Like, it, and I think it was actually maybe like a two pronged thing. I really wanted to drift my friends that were out there, but I also really wanted to be able to drive. Like there was as a beginner, most people were in this beginner class, uh, like the beginner, um, like, uh, cause it's divided between like beginner advanced intermediate, right? So the beginner section of people, there's obviously a lot more of those people that are on these tracks, uh, like IRL. So like in those lines where you're waiting to go, because you're a beginner, you kind of have your learning opportunity dampened a little bit because at least here, you're maybe waiting like, I mean, honestly, like 10 minutes in like an hour session. And so, you know, if you're lucky, like you're going to get, what is that, like four, maybe five? Like you could say six, but it's not like perfect 10 minutes here and there. So like, I really wanted to drift my homies and uh, to be able to learn better and get better. I realized that I need to get better so I can get out of beginners and then be able to drift with them. And the other plus there was that if I got into more of like the intermediate or advanced group, then I could actually uh, do like those like three, four five car tandems, which then also gave me more seat time, right? So it was kind of one of those things where I was like, okay, so I want to get better this is the reason like I have more fun and I want to be out there with the homies. Like I see them, you know, on these crazy tandems, I want to be out there. And that has, and I think really, like I mentioned to this day is a big driving factor for me. So even when it's like difficult and, and even when it's hard, like that still pushes me. Also, it's so funny, this section right here, I, I almost edited it out, but I was literally saying on stream to myself, I'm like, man, I just remember that there's this one section everyone talks about that uh it's like it's like a rite of passage almost that everyone crashes and uh, i was like man I, I always forget where it is and then uh, there i am going off track i thought it'd be cool to include it like this is j just genuinely me trying to learn this track but yeah so like i, I just want to say like for those of you that are are learning uh for those of you that are looking to get better like i think the the biggest thing that i could say is like you know be patient with yourself, especially when we talk about a setup, but you could apply this to a lot of things, right? Like be patient with yourself. It's okay to not be perfect. It's okay to actually be trash at something. But I think the important thing is like you try. And then when you try, you try to gain something out of it, right? Like a bad or negative experience like is unfortunate and it's not fun. But if you walk away like from like if you gain or learn something from it, then that's an experience that is actually going to be a net benefit for you. So maybe it's just me like ranting, but I just really like this weekend was so crazy. 
I, I just wanted to kind of have more of just a general conversation because this is like one of those times, man. I mean, like, let's just apply it right now to myself. Like, I wasn't very happy with a lot of these tracks. I wasn't really happy with how I was driving. There's a lot of excuses that I could make. Uh, a lot of opportunities for me to stop driving. Uh, but like, and even honestly, I'll be honest with you, like even editing this video was hard this week because I was so unhappy with how I drove. Uh, I haven't mentioned this, but I guess this is a good time. This is the track actually that ended the stream. Normally there's a little bit more content, but like ended the stream because my clutch pedal spring completely snapped in half, which is insane. And then it became uh, practically unusable. And when I say practically, like actually unusable. So that ended the stream early. So it's like all the sourness of like these things combined and then like rewatching this. And I'm like, dude, like, you know, a lot of like harsh judgment on myself. I think that's just a personal thing. But like I still made the time and like push myself to look and and this is like me trying to use this opportunity to just kind of talk to you guys especially those that have been watching this series or maybe you're new here and you're just kind of curious like what's going on i think that there's kind of a, a lot of important things that both of us can gain right so like for me hey bro like definitely at least like once a month now i'm going to be checking the bolts on my rig i have a butt kicker setup too so there's probably a little bit of additional vibrations so I'm going to work on that every month, make sure my bolts are tight, take some time. Like, I don't want to, I just want to drive, but I think it's really important. And here's why we found that it's important. I think the spring is what it is, but like, there's been a couple other things that, um, were not tight. And, and I actually, after the, I record this video, I'm going to be going onto my rig and, and redoing a lot of the setup and checking the bolts and stuff. So it's like, that's a great learning opportunity for me. Like it sucks, but I got to, uh, learn what the consequences for my actions were when I don't do it. And, uh, and here we are. Right. So anyways, I don't want to come off preachy. Uh, and maybe like, I don't know, maybe you guys are not really a fan of the, this kind of, and we want to stick to the track. If that's true, just let me know in the comments. Like, uh, I'm trying to be receptive. I, I want to improve just like, uh, my driving. I want to improve these videos, make them entertaining for you guys. I think the audio, like, Normally I watch it and then, uh, well, I literally watch it and then record my audio on top of that. My commentary is kind of weird without the, the engine noises, but I, I don't know if it's really that big of a loss. Hopefully with this video too, another thing I found out is how to make it a little bit higher quality for YouTube. There's a little bit that goes into it. I won't go down a rabbit hole, but hopefully this one will look aesthetically a little bit better. But ultimately, like, you know, if we kind of summarize this weekend, I think basically i just need for myself like if i were to ask myself like well what do you walk away with i think i want to work a little bit harder on these tracks that i haven't normally done i want to work a little bit more on this togue stuff i really want to challenge myself and uh you know be okay with not being perfect and i think that if i'm going to be honest with you guys that are are watching and being a part of the streams like that's more like like, I would rather know, like, someone that I look up to, not that anyone looks up to me, but, like, someone that's, like, good at something, like, to be honest about the the hard times, right? And then seeing, like, that improvement over time, oof, that was a, a big mistake. But, yeah, I, I think I would really like to be back at EK again. Uh, this was a, a really fun track. I really actually did enjoy it. It was really challenging, but it, it's also really rewarding. I really wish I could be closer on proximity but yeah, it was a little bit of a struggle. Yeah, you can see here too, like especially at nighttime, like I don't really know this track at all because of the low seat time I've had on it. So the second I don't see someone in front of me, I was like actually kind of low-key scared. I was like, oh, I'm not sure where this is going to go. Anyway, dudes, I appreciate you guys so much. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching. Uh, we'll be back up rolling this weekend uh, i hope to see you guys on the server if you guys have any comments feedback or anything for me leave them uh in the comments on this youtube video thanks for watching boys and i'll see you on the next one peace